Okay, let's have a look at the skull from in front, um, sometimes called the, the Norma Frontalis. And this will be one of a series of views that we'll look at. And the first thing I'd like you to notice is, of course, that the skull is really divided into two components. There's the neurocranium, which is the sort of frontal bone backwards, and this is the part that houses the brain. And then, of course, there's the visceral cranium, which is the facial skeleton, um, which is the bulk of what you're seeing in this view. So let's just go through the bones quickly and name the bones and show you their outlines. The most obvious bone superiorly in the frontal view, or the norma frontalis, is the frontal bone, and you can see it's a large bone here. It does actually start life as two bones, and sometimes you have a metopic suture running up the middle, but in most people that has gone, but it's something worth keeping in mind. So frontal bone almost goes back to the, the, sort of the coronal plane here at the back with the coronal suture, which you'll see in other views shortly. Um, you can see that it forms the bulk of the roof of the orbits. There's the superciliary ridges here, which is a thick part of the bone. And you can see it has a process which comes down, the zygomatic process which meets the zygoma on either side, and it's going to form, help form part of the boundary of the orbit. The next most obvious bone is this sort of star-shaped bone here, the zygoma. You can see it's got a frontal process maxillary process and a zygomatic process running posteriorly. Um, it forms the bulk of the lateral wall of the orbit. Uh, then you have two little tiny bones here with a little suture running up the middle. These are the nasal bones and in life they're extended by the nasal cartilages which project out here and if you feel your own nose you can feel that part of your nose moving but certainly not that part. There's the, this area here of the frontal bone I forgot to mention, it's called the glabella. This is the anterior nasal apertures um, on, a, on a skull, but clearly there's obviously soft tissue and cartilage that make up your nose. This bone here is the maxilla, and you can see there's an intermaxillary suture running down here. Um, the anterior nasal spine here, and this, of course, the maxilla um, has a zygomatic process which meets the zygoma and helps form part of the floor of the orbit. It's got an alveolar process which houses the upper teeth and of course it helps form the boundary of these um, anterior nasal apertures. And then the other bone you can obviously see in the frontal view is the mandible and you've got the body of the mandible and of course that started off life as two bones as well and there is a symphysis in the middle here which in, in young um, in fetal white, then of course fuses and we end up with one mandible. But on a frontalis view you can see the body, the ramus back here and we'll see the rest of it on the lateral view. The other thing that we technically should cover is the orbit but we're going to do a separate little video for that but we should mention that the lacrimal bone here is actually seen on the frontal view of the skull and you can also see in the frontal view the nasal septum and you can see this is a good example where the nasal septum is not in the midline but is displaced to one side so um, now a couple of features which actually are interesting, they line up in a, in a row and that's this supraorbital notch, the infraorbital uh, foramen and the mental foramen and these lie in a line down the skull like so and they are the exit points for three of the cutaneous branches from each of one of the major divisions of the trigeminal so we've got the supraorbital nerve um, from the thalamic division, the infraorbital nerve from the maxillary division, and the mental um, nerve from the mandibular division.